So we're going to start off. I've got a factory training workbook um, that's um, that's brought up on the screen right now. This is going to be for um, RTUs, and and we'll we'll start off sort of looking looking at this. We'll look today at the NetGuardian A32. Um, time permitting, we'll also roll forward and um, look a little bit at the Temp Defender as well. Um, whatever we don't cover from that, we will cover um, sort of um, starting off in tomorrow's session. So first page here, we've got a, a table of contents for, for what we're going to be going over throughout the, out the day. Um, what we're going to look at here is we're going to um, start off at the NetGuardian 832A. Um, so we've got a NetGuardian 832A. I'll sort of scroll down so you can um, see, see what's going on on this unit. What this sort of began as the precursor to this was a, was a modular device called the KDA. And, and what it was designed to do was it was designed to be a product that was very flexible and decide, or designed to be something where we had a single unified firmware um, that was able to drive a lot of different functionality on, on the device. So um, what, what you'll see is we'll, we'll refer to and how sort of from a software engineering perspective as um, sort of what kind of device you're running. So you could have a NetGuardian 832A, you can have a NetGuardian um, 216G3, you can have um, a Temp Defender um, or a Temp Defender G2. But for all of these units, uh, there, are, there are various build options that, that can be built up with specific needs for them. So we'll see on this NetGuardian, um, this NetGuardian's been built up. It's got um, a front panel, it's got a DB9 craft panel, and um, a few buttons for navigating front panel LCD. On the back of this, we'll see that there's quite a bit of, of different um, functionality that there is sort of on this device. This device has been um, built up with an Ethernet switch, um, dual Ethernet as well. So the Ethernet um, that you're getting out of that dual connection are going to be completely isolated networks. So Net1 and Net2 are completely unaware of each other, um, both sort of at a hardware level and at a, um, at a software level as well. Um, as well, this has a number of um, data server ports. These ports can be used for different things. Um, one thing that they're commonly used for is remote terminal access, um, which we'll be able to sort of look at how that's configured as we go on throughout the day. Um, as well, this, this unit uh, um, basically provides a 12 VDC power supply. Um, that's basically to power any kind of um, perhaps 4 to 20 milliamp sensors that may be used inside of a current loop um, when you're monitoring with one of your analog, um, um, analog sensors. An 832 um, is, is a device that has eight um, relays and 32 um, discrete. So you'll sort of notice with our, with our naming scheme, um, it's typically broken up um, when you have a, a, a unit that has a number in it. It's typically broken up with some reference to its capacity. So 832A means eight controls, 32 discretes, and analogs with that. Um, and on the 832A, there's six analogs typically populated. Um, in addition, there can be um, power monitored um, on some of those analogs as well. Um, it could um, take an internal or an external temperature as well. So depending on, depending on what the individual need is at whatever site, you might see a quite a different range of exactly how your A32A has been populated. I think right now we're somewhere in the 100, 130, 150 range of individual builds of NetGuardian 832s. As far as accessing the unit, um, we'll see that this craft, uh, this craft interface is something that um, is going to be used mostly for turn up of the unit um, as sort of when it's in, um, first deployed. So you'll, you'll use that craft interface typically to provision um, basically an IP address that's, um, that the unit is going to use. And then the rest of that is going to be done um, through a couple of different ways. 
for the NetGuardian 832, you could provision through the web interface. You can also provision through an external Windows application. Um, that external Windows application is called ng-edit. Um, so we'll take a look at both of those as well as we go on. And options for sort of dial-up modem access for places where Ethernet may or may not be available. We can have um, dial-up basically through a POTS line to report back to um, some master station as well. We'll cover some other things. What, um, what we'll see is that the, um, the data ports that are on the NetGuardian are going to have quite a bunch of different build options that you can have. So with the eight data ports that we see populated here, I know that there are builds where all of those A32 ports or all of those um, data ports are going to be um, um, RS-232s, but sometimes um, a particular location has a need for being RS-232, some, um, a handful of um, RS-485s as well. Sometimes you'll have a 202 modem there as well. Um, so I know that there's, there's different flexibility there. The entire key thing to sort of take away from that is that you're going to have flexibility of options at the time when you're ordering it. Um, since the hardware is a little bit different, um, bas basically between an RS-232 and an RS-485, that's not something you could just like change in the field. Um, but at the time that you order, basically you can take a look at what are you going to need at the specific site and get exactly sort of a loadout of, of data ports that you would need um, for a specific point at that time. And we got some pinouts here as well. So these pinouts are the ones that we would typically use for those. These pinouts are available both in this factory, um, factory training manual and online at dpstele.com. So speaking of user manuals, I'll show you the DPS website real quick. It's telly.com. Navigating to dpstele.com, you'll see this is zoomed in quite a bit. Um, but you'll see basically a landing page with a number of different resources that you can, um, that you can get at from here. One of the things that, um, that would be really useful is the support section and my DPS section. So my DPS section, you can basically turn up, create a user account for yourself and um, gain access to a number of different, um, different resources that we have avail available. Um, so some of those are configuration guides that we might have um, for specific applications. Um, beyond that, the support tab is going to give you some information about how to get a hold of, a hold of DPS um, Telecom for additional support. So you'll see that there's user manuals here, there's software and firmware here, um, and um, some how-to guides as well. So you'll be able to click through on, on any of those kinds of options in order to see um, further information. We also have um, support number as well. So anytime you call out 559-454-1600, you're gonna get through to the front desk. And that front desk can basically direct your call as needed. So if you need tech support assistance, um, during, during hours, uh, that's going to be 7 um, Pacific Standard Time or Pacific Daylight Time, depending on what California is at, in at the time. Um, anything from 7 Pacific to 6, um, 6 p.m. Pacific, we're going to have engineers in the office and open tech support hours during that time. Um, outside, of those, um, outside of those times, we also have um, sub after hours support as well. If you call the front desk basically and let it ring, it's going to forward you out to um, um, basically a call center and they'll make a call out to one of the DPS engineers and typically get one of us on, on the line and get you a call back within, within about 15 minutes or so.